Hello everyone and welcome to the latest iteration of the course Open Network Learning, a different sort of course that we hope will change the way you think about teaching and learning. We'll be, uh, we're part of the course organizer team basically and we put the thing together with the help of lots of colleagues who you'll be meeting over the next few weeks from universities all over the world. But first of all, our own introductions to give you an idea of who's behind all this. My name's Alistair Creelman. I work at Linnaeus University in Kalmar in the southeast of Sweden, and I work as an e-learning specialist there. Uh, and I am Maria Kvarnström. I work as a senior lecturer at Linköping University. And I'm Lars Olin. I work as an educational developer at Linköping University. And I'm Lotta Objansson. I'm an educational developer at Lund University. And my name is Jörg Paregis. I'm the head of the Center for Teaching and Learning at Karlstad University in the middle of Sweden. So, we wish you a very warm welcome. We look forward to learning with you over the next few weeks. And uh, let's have a look at the course now. So, let's talk a little bit about uh, the course you're just about to start. Open Network Learning ONL 211. You might wonder why it's called 211, and it's quite simple really. This is 2021 and it's the first ONL of 2021. So uh, the next course could be 212, simple as that. Anyway, o Open Network Learning has been running since 2014 and uh, it's, been, it's gone through a lot of changes. We try to update the course regularly. We try to uh, react to the feedback we get from participants. And really the course is in a constant state of evolution as all courses should be really. As you can see, starting 22nd of February, going on to 16th of May, it's a pretty intensive course. We give you a couple of weeks to get acclimatized and then we get started with the real coursework. And you're going to find it challenging, maybe confusing at first, but very rewarding since you're going to meet people from all over the world. You're going to be collaborating online, both synchronously and asynchronously, and you're going to be networking and, you know, getting colleagues for the future. So let's dive in and have a look. We call it a course, a community and an approach. Uh, yes, it's a course. It's uh, a course of learning by doing. Um, open network learning is exactly what it says. We use uh, open uh, learning spaces as open as we possibly can. We work in networks and we try to learn about open network learning by doing just that. We hope by the end of the course, you'll find that it has created a community for you and that you will have use for this community in the future. It's part of your personal learning network. All information about the course is found on the main website, opennetworklearning.se. So go there and read up about the course, about how, the, the, how, it's, how it's run, about its structure and so on. So a little bit of background. As I said, open collaborative learning in small groups supported by facilitators, learning by doing. That's what we're going in for. And you'll be working with people from dis different subject areas, from many different countries. And it's all about professional development as teachers online. You'll be meeting mostly other teachers, but we also have educational technologists and course developers involved in this course. And it revolves around problem-based learning in an online environment. Some of you have uh, taken part in problem-based learning or maybe teach courses where you use problem-based learning, but probably in a physical setting in a traditional campus course. Here we investigate how problem-based learning can be implemented online. And we would say that we've gone away from the traditional learning management system to what we can call a learning experience platform. What we mean by that is that uh, we don't use one of the main uh, learning management systems such as Moodle or Canvas or Blackboard. We've created our own um, online in learning space or number of learning spaces. You'll see how it gets on. So let's have a look now at the ONL community. They're you and me and everyone else. All the 
everyone in the community are the teacher, the facilitators, the organizers, and the learners. And you come from different countries. We have this term 12 participating partner institutions. <clears throat> so uh, two, four, six from Sweden. We have two from Finland, one from Switzerland, Germany, Singapore, and South Africa. And each of these universities provide a number of participants to the community. But we also have open learners. And the open learners, they come from all over the world. They are, <clears throat> the course is open to join. We take in about, uh, about 30 open learners each time. It's very restricted, but we try to get a good international mix. And this way we can get people from other cultures and uh, get an even more international perspective on our work. So all of these um, institutions, or um, they all feed into the community. And in the community, we divide these people into study groups, which we call PBL groups, problem-based learning groups, normally around eight participants per group. And uh, the other symbols are for a facilitator. So there's a facilitator for every group, and that is an experienced member of the ONL team who comes from one of the organize of the partner universities. So the facilitator is your, your guide for the course. The facilitator is helped by a co-facilitator and they are former learners, former students of ONL who have agreed to come back. And they are mentors or study buddies, you could call them. They're there because they know what it feels like to be in your position and they can help you from that perspective. So every study group with about eight participants has a facilitator and a co-facilitator. In the course, we divided it up like this. It's 12, over a period of 12 weeks, we uh, have first getting started where you are now, and that's simply getting started, getting to know the course, the tools, the platforms, and introducing yourself. Second week, connecting. We'll put you into stu your study groups. You will meet up in your study groups and you will start working together, getting to know each other and working out how you're going to work together, how you're going to collaborate. Then the real work starts with topic one, online participation and digital literacies, which we investigate for two weeks. And each group has to do an assignment around a scenario. Then into topic two on open learning, before we have a little break in the middle, one week of reflection. This is not a week off. It's not a week of just uh, lying down and uh, relaxing. It's a week of catching up, of uh, reflecting. How is the work going? How is our collaboration and the group working? How can we make it better? It's time to take stock and see if we can improve for the next part. We then move into learning in communities, topic three, topic four, design for online and blended learning. And finally, topic five is a mini topic. It's really what have we learned and how do we move forward? A typical uh, overview of it, we, the, the course exists on, on, on different levels. As you can see at the top, we have the different uh, topics and the, the weeks there. And during that time, we have a space for the whole ONL 211 community, where we all uh, exchange information and post uh, assignments to let the whole community see it. And that runs all through the course. From the second week, we're in our PBL groups, and they will communicate and interact and learn together. So that's the second layer. We have the macro layer, the meso layer, and then we have the micro layer where you, each person, each participant will be writing their own blog. You'll be writing reflective blog posts on each of the five topics. So that's the personal level of the course. To help you through the course, we will be on our organizing webinars with uh, guest speakers, 
and also a lot of collaborative and interactive work during the webinars. We will also organize one or two tweet chats, and that is a chat session that's live on Twitter. Some people love it. It's great fun. It's very challenging. You have to think very fast, uh, but uh, it's another way of um, interacting, and we like we give you a chance to try that. <clears throat> Here is um, an example from a two-week topic. So that uh, we start the topic where you get the information on the website and there's a scenario which you have to investigate. You will then have a meeting with your group to discuss the scenario and the topic and how you're going to work with it. You'll then get some inspiration with a webinar. Then you'll meet again and continue your group discussions. And again, you'll have a meeting. There may be a tweet chat, maybe another webinar in the second week to give you more help. And then finally, in your last online PBL group meeting, you'll finalize your assignment and get it ready to share with the ONL community. You'll also have to write an individual blog reflection, which the community will comment on. So as you can see, it goes on three different levels, the individual level of the blog, the PBL group work, and the whole community. In that PBL group work, you'll be using a model called FISH, which is called Focus, Investigate, and Share. And it's a, P, a simplified PBL model that will guide, it guides you through a process to work with each scenario for the topic where you look at the scenario, what do we see, what do we understand, what do we need to find out more about. You then go and investigate and see what you found and assess them. And then finally, you decide how you're going to share your knowledge and the solution you found. So that really wraps it up. That's what the course is about. Now it's time to jump in and see what happens. Look forward to seeing you. Goodbye for now.